Welcome back to this video lecture series on programming questions for placement preparation. So today the problem we are going to look at is known as the longest common subsequence problem which is uh, quite a popular question in the field of dynamic programming. So let's first uh, get to know about the problem statement. It says given two strings find the length of the longest common subsequence. So what basically uh, common subsequence is that uh, if suppose we are given these two strings uh, here a b d g c h and b z g f c so if we are to find the common subsequence it means a uh, subsequent uh, like a subsequence of a sequence which matches uh, with each other so suppose here if i take uh, a common subsequence of length 2 here you see b b g and g basically the way these two uh, character appears in both of the strings like the order is same first b appears here here also first b appears then g appears then here also g appears it doesn't matter whatever characters are there between uh, these two you know characters in the string but the thing is that these two characters are common in both of the strings and the order they appear in both of the strings are same so basically it's uh, the length of 2 when it is then b and g that is this uh, common subsequence so now in this problem we have to find a common subsequence which has the longest length and we have to find that length so here if we uh, see these two strings here a b d g c h and b z g f c we can clearly see that the longest common subsequence is b g and c b g and c and the length is 3 so uh, let's have a look at the approach so what we are going to do again uh, we are going to use dynamic programming here the thing is that uh, dynamic programming has a uh, property called overlapping substructure it says that if some computation we are seeing that some computation are being done um, for more than once in a program we will not do the computation part for more than once what we will do we will rather store the result and we will try to utilize that result if in a later point of the program we would uh, you know uh, be required to use it so for that what we are going to do we are going to make a table and with the row size equals to the first string size and column size equal to the second string size the first row and the first column of the table will be assigned with zero so uh, pretty clear uh, the thing is that if the string sizes are n1 and n2 then the number of rows will be n1 plus 1 and the number of columns will be n2 plus 1 and the first row and the first column will be assigned with value 0 for every iteration through the table uh, which is a 2d, uh, 2D array the checking will be uh, for a single condition that is we're going to check for the last character of both these strings in every iteration if they are not same then we are going to choose either of uh, them the maximum of these two the element in the previous row or the element in the previous column and if uh, these two characters matches then what we're going to do we're going to take the element uh, at particularly diagonal position uh, you know left wise diagonal and we're going to add a one to it the last element of the table will store the length of this uh, longest common subsequence so all these you know a condition checking part will be very clear when we jump onto the programming part so here uh, what I have done here is actually I've already taken two strings here okay uh, and uh, here I have uh, taken these two sizes the sizes of the strings and here I'm going to use this function LCS where I'm going to pass these two strings different strings and their sizes and then I'm going to define it so main work for this program is actually to define this function this is very uh, normal work so uh, let's have a look the strings we have taken a c d b g f e and a z d g y f so the longest common subsequence will be a d g and f so the result we are expecting will be 4 so uh, here let's now define this lcs function so the return type will be void and the arguments are string type i'm going to name it s1 and s2 only string s1 s2 then two integers uh, which indicates their sizes so again int n1 and int n2 so one condition if n1 is equals to 0 
or n2 is equals to 0 if any either of them are 0 we're going to say return because uh, then there's no point of finding a longest common subsequence so here uh, if that is not the thing now we have a valid a valid value for n1 and 2 like uh, a value which is greater than 0 then we're going to take first this table here which is a 2d array and the size of the table the row i'll take as n n2 i'll take n2 plus 1 and in the column n1 plus 1 now here uh, i'm going to assign the first column and the first row of the table with a value of 0 so I'm going to take this for loop int k equals to 0 firstly uh, I'm going to assign all the elements residing the first row with 0 so here k will be as then n1 plus 1 k plus plus So the 0th row will have values of 0 and then the 0th column so here again I'm going to take this L is to 0 L is less than N2 plus 1 and L plus plus here uh, now the 0th column will be uh, you know assigned with value of 0 so all the rows here it will be L and here as I know that when I did this uh, you know 0th row uh, to assign with 0 values then the first element in this iteration will be the 0th row and 0th column so I'll start from 1 here uh, so I do not really want to repeat this tape again so here this is done now the uh, table iteration part so for that uh, I'm going to take I which is going to start from 1 because uh, the 0th row and the 0th column already has a value of 0 so the iteration will start from 1 and here the row so it will be n2 plus 1 and I plus plus then 2d matrix so uh, another for loop which will again start from 1 only j is less than n1 plus 1 j plus plus now the condition checking part so basically you see uh, here s2 will be row wise and s1 is column wise so if s2 of i minus 1 because i and j both are starting from 1 and the first uh, literal is at 0 so I have to take i minus 1 so if this is not is equals to string 1 of j minus 1 what I'm going to do is table of i j is equal to max of table of either the element at the previous row or the element at previous column right and if this is not the case that uh, both the elements are equal then what I'm going to do is table i j is equal to table of i minus 1 j minus 1 plus 1 so here now uh, I'll just try to print the table how it looks like so for that uh, I'll first say see how the sorry string will be there the table and then I'm going to run another for loop here let's say m m is less than n2 plus 1 m plus plus 
and then another for loop zero and is less than and one plus one and plus plus C out table M N space and here an end line. So now lastly I'm going to print this message that the length of longest common subsequence is so uh, what we have known that the element at the last of the table so uh, the position of that element the last element the table will be at the last row and the last column so now we know that the size of the table if we see here it's n2 plus 1 and n1 plus 1 so last index of the table will be table of n2 and n1 so this will be table of n2 and n1 right so this is the uh, program we should be okay with so let's now run this so here is the output you see here you can see the table uh, that we uh, you know created first and here is the length of the LCS 4 as we had expected. The first row and the first column of the table is assigned with zero value and then uh, while checking the conditions all the values are set here. And as you can see the last element of the table that is uh, situating at uh, table n to n1 this position it says 4 which is actually the length of the longest common subsequence. So this was the very simple code using dynamic programming so that we could actually get the length of co longest common subsequence of two strings given. Thank you for watching this video and staying with us. See you next time.